Ducks fans, are you ready? You are listening to the Ducks and Pucks podcast. This is the number one home for Anaheim Ducks talk and analysis. Here we go. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Mike Walters, along with my host, Eddie Richard. And the Ducks start out the season 5 1 and 1, and they lost the last four. They're now 5 5 and 1. A lot of craziness going on. Uh, Getzloff dropped some F bombs. We may drop some on this show as well. We've got plenty to talk about. A lot of stats we're going to talk about, fan questions as well. We're going to go over these games. But uh, what do you think, Eddie? Uh, you know, the Ducks started out, it seemed like okay, but now they've dropped four in a row. I think reality finally hit. You, you can't play this game, you know, you can't play a 60 minute game just 20 minutes. You can't stand around and, and watch the other team skate. You can't go and chase them and be out of position. You, you can't let them run over your goalie. I mean, it, it just. It seems like those those first few games were a fluke, and even those games winning, they probably didn't deserve to win. It, it just it seems like luck was on their side. Those lucky bounces, that the other team's goal is making a mistake. But you know, I mean, you're averaging a lot of shots per game, and I can't recall the last time our Ducks actually outshot a team, and they're they're close to almost 40 shots per game. It's just ridiculous. You know, too many shots of anything is pretty much bad. You know, too many shots of tequila, you're gonna end up on the floor in the hospital. Too many medical shots are going to end up, you know, getting more sick or something like that. I mean, too many shots in your goalie is going to result in injuries. It's going to result burning your goalie out. I mean, you're pretty much leaving him out to dry, and and you're not being that team in front of him. You're just kind of like, okay, let's just let Gibson or Miller just take all the shots, and, you know, once we get the puck, we'll try to do something with it. But if we don't, oh, well, we'll just watch the other team shoot and, and possibly score. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of been the theme this last week. I mean, the Ducks, they played Vegas, uh, Buffalo, Chicago, and Dallas. They lost all four games. So they they went on the road. They went to Las Vegas. They played the Golden Knights. Uh, they were outshot 45-18 to 18 in this game. Uh, you know, William Carlson got on the board early. Ryan Reeves got a goal. Uh, ben Street. Uh, got a goal, got the Ducks kind of, you know, back into it. They were down 2-1. to one. Uh, Vegas got an empty net goal, and the Ducks ended up losing this game. But, uh, it, again, it wasn't really a good performance for the Ducks, Eddie. Uh, they they could have been, I, I think, blown out by a lot more. They didn't score on the power play. The Golden Knights did score on the power play. Uh, the Ducks actually did win the faceoff battle in this game, but – Looking at these four games that started off, uh, this was you know uh, another game where we talked about it, and it's it's really Gibson against the other team. Oh, absolutely, and it's getting frustrating. I don't know how vocal the guy Gibson is in the locker room, but I mean, I'd be dropping f bombs on my team left and right. I mean, there's no goalie in the world, and if anyone says differently, they're probably lying. But there's no goalie that wants to face you know, 40-plus shots a game, especially in the NHL. I mean, I just play beer league goalie, and it frustrates me when my teams start letting people come in on the breakaway, uh, get multiple shots without support. It just, you know, it, sometimes I think, you know, I had one game where the team just kept letting, you know, breakaway after breakaway. I think I made, I want to say, like seven breakaway saves, and after that I was just done. I was too tired. I, I, I wasn't trying to give me that extra effort, that extra 100%, because I saw the team in front of me, and they weren't doing – you know, the same I was doing. They were just, just kind of just strolling around, watching the other team come in. And you can ask any goal, like any goalie too. It doesn't matter if you're up 10 nothing or you're losing 10 nothing. I mean, you never want another puck in the back of your net. It, it's just, you know, it's something that no goalie ever wants. It doesn't matter what the score is. That just always like hurts right there when a puck goes behind you and you have to dig that out of your net. It, I mean, it's like, you know, someone else grabbing your significant other. I mean, when you were in a ship, you don't want anyone else touching your significant other or anything like that. I mean, that's how I can describe playing goalie. And I'm pretty sure, especially being in NHL, those goalies don't want any pucks going, uh, going through them. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it it was another game where the Ducks got outshot. We've talked about it. We're going to go over some of the stats on this show as far as how the Ducks have, uh, well, how they, you know, uh, fared with the shots. We're going to talk about puck possession and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a, a great game by the Ducks. I mean, when Ben Street got that goal early in the third period, they were only down by one. They, you know, tried to mount a comeback basically in the third period. They couldn't get it done. Um, 
they, but they were outshot pretty bad in this whole game. I mean, fifteen to three in the first period, uh, thirteen to six in the second, and seventeen to nine in the third. So, uh, not a good game for the Ducks. Uh, you know, after starting out five one and one, they lost this game. They then had, you know, basically after this, they had to go back home. And they had to play Buffalo the next night, which uh, Miller went net. And, you know, this game, (laughs) I think this was the best one of the week. I mean, obviously it was a special game. The Ducks had the uh, Korea retirement. Uh, Before that, I got there really early. It was awesome. Posted a video on Facebook Live of the ceremony. I'll put it up on the YouTube as well. And this game... It started out a lot better. I, you know, uh, Sam Steele got his first NHL goal towards the end of the first period. Uh, Keith Sherwood, he got his uh, second goal on a nice uh, snipe in the second period. And it, and it looked like, you know, things are going well for the Ducks in this game. And then they take a penalty. They give him a goal. Skinner gets another uh, a goal at the end of the, the uh, second period. It's 2-2. Two two. Uh, Rista Linen gets a goal in the beginning of the third period on another penalty by the Ducks. And the Ducks end up losing this one 4-2. But, uh, again, more frustration, Eddie. The Ducks got out shot 45-28. Uh, the special teams play still killed them as well. They gave up two goals shorthanded. They didn't score with the extra man. And what looked good halfway through the game for the Ducks ended up not so good on uh, the Korea retirement night. Yeah, they started off real strong. I mean, they got the crowd going. That was really pumped up seeing Korea, uh, Korea's, Korea, sorry about that, banner go up. And then uh, seeing Sam still get his first goal, I mean, the whole crowd was just electrified. Everyone was happy. It was a good environment. You know, Sherwood comes in and gets his goal. We're to up 2 nothing. You know, man, it's, 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 it's going to be great. We're going to win on his night. And all of a sudden, Buffalo goes and, and scores three unanswered goals plus the, the empty netter at the end. It's just kind of a, a slap in the face right there. I mean, I wasn't too upset about this game because my mind was elsewhere just watching Paul Korea's banner go up. I think a lot of the Ducks fans, that was their number one priority right there was that. But, I mean, I think the Ducks, once again, didn't play their hardest. They only they showed up for half the game and then kind of lollygagged and, and just kind of half-assed it, which you can't do in, the, in that level. I mean, yeah, Buffalo's the last-place team, but are, are one of the bottom-tier teams that aren't expected to make it to the playoffs, but they have some firepower and they have some speed, and they're not afraid to use it in – Pretty much, they have nothing to lose. I mean, the pressure's not on them to win. It's it's on the Ducks that are that playoff team that that's been a contender. I mean, both teams came back to back. Uh, Buffalo played LA that that night on Saturday too. So there's no excuse, for, you know, for the Ducks at all. This game, it just they once again they played like crap and and they watched Buffalo skate around them and didn't pr- provide that support for their goalie and for the team. Yeah, I mean, I thought they did good the first 30 minutes, obviously, you know, up to zero. It seemed like things were going okay, uh, you know, and then penalty trouble came in, which is kind of a theme that we'll talk about in these four games. You know, when you look at the Ducks, uh, we have a couple more games to cover. But uh, as far as the power play goes, in these four games, the Ducks did not score in the power play at all, not even one time. And they had uh, 16 times where they were shorthanded. And they were scored on four out of those 16 times. So, you know, 25% their uh, efficiency by their opponents on the power play. So, you know, that kind of, you know, factored into this game. Uh, Like we said, the Ducks, uh, you know, it was a good night in the sense of honoring Korea, which there was a lot of emotion. Uh, It was exciting. Um, A lot of stuff in the pregame. Seemed like the first 30 minutes that everything went good, but... Then after that, it kind of went down, and, and the Ducks ended up losing this game. So they end up going, you know, now 5-3-1. and one. They end up having to go on the road trip, uh, a, sh- a short one. They play Chicago and Dallas. They, the Ducks did get uh, Nick Ritchie back this uh, week. He finally signed his contract. Um, he, he played in this first game against Chicago. And, you know, this game was kind of interesting. Um uh, Again, they got scored on on the power play early by Brandon Saad. Uh, Ricard McKell, who's been kind of quiet this year, got a goal. Uh, Patrick Kane uh, answered back in the third, and then Saad got an empty net goal. But the Ducks had a chance to get a point in this game. 
Uh, Ryan Kessler did score late in the third period, but the refs uh, reviewed the play. They said it was hit by a high stick, and, you know, that tying goal was taken away, so the Ducks ended up losing. It looked like the Ducks might have got a point, but, you know, kind of the same thing here, Eddie. They were outshot uh, 38-25, to and they couldn't get anything going on the power play. Oh, no, and I really think uh, that that no call on that goal, that was the right call from the refs. I mean, it's painful. I want it to be a goal, but after seeing that, on multiple angles and slow mo, I mean that was the right. That was the right call. It, it did go in off the high stick, um, but man, I mean, if we would have scored that, that probably would have been the game changer for us. We could have went into overtime and at least got a point. But you know, once again, we we let a struggling team come in and take advantage of us. I mean, we made Chicago look like a superstar team right there, and and they're not that that, that caliber team anymore. And I just don't know what happened. We just kind of let it go. I mean, I'm glad Raquel finally got a, another goal. Um, he's still yet to score uh, in, in five on five. I think he got a power play goal was his first one, and this one was a four on four. Great goal. Beautiful goal. And I thought that was going to be the game changer too right there. Okay, Raquel just scored. You know, bam, he, he's going to start heating up. But, I mean, he really needs to step up. He, he's he, he's one of our top players, and he's not really producing. It's only two goals so far. I Something needs to happen. He needs to, you know, pull his head out of his butt and start producing those numbers and getting him up there. And especially when we're letting all these these shots go in, if we're going to let all these shots go in, we have to change our possession time and, and get that puck more and put more pucks in the net, make those shots count. I mean, if if we're going to let the shots keep, you know, increasing, we might as well just try to outscore them. I mean, I feel sorry for the goalies, but it seems like the Ducks aren't really willing to change at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. It's It's been Gibson against the other team so far. And early on, like we said, the Ducks were able to, uh, you know, win some of those games. You know, they were 5-1-1. One, and one. It seemed like things were at least okay. But in these last couple games here, you know, you keep giving up this many chances. And, and we've got some crazy stats to talk about. We'll talk about it after this Dallas game that comes up here too. But the stats aren't good. You look at the numbers and everything – the Ducks are 500, which isn't the end of the world. You know, it's not, it's not panic mode yet. But you look at the way things have gone. It, uh, I mean, it hasn't gone the Ducks' favor. I mean, Gibson has really stolen some of the games. And that's why they were, you know, doing so well to begin uh, the season. But now it's kind of reared its ugly head. And we saw this again, too. Uh, the Ducks uh, went into Dallas again. I don't know why, but in the weird uh, bit of scheduling, they had two games against the Stars in Texas. And, you know, I, I hate to get upset uh, or, or sound like a broken record, but the Ducks had a bad second period again against Dallas. You know, they, uh, they got down 2-1 to one in the first period, then they gave up three goals in the second period in this one. They ended up losing this game 5-2. to two. And they were outshot 41 to 25. You know, they, they got burned in the second period earlier in the season where they gave up four goals. In this one, they gave up three goals. And, you know, it, it just was a bad game, Eddie. I mean, a lot didn't go right for Anaheim in this one. Oh, no. And I'm not going to keep repeating myself either because I, I think the last two games I talked about kind of, you know, flood over to this one. So I'm not going to go ahead and, and beat a dead horse or I should say you know, beat a dead duck. But so I'll talk about something positive I noticed from this game. I like the physicality the Ducks came in with. They had 27 hits, and they just showed something like they had last season. That team, you know, don't get in front of my goalie, you know, and, and taking those shots. I, I loved it. Like, I, I watched, you know, I rewatched the game because I had to miss, you know, the live game, but I rewatched it, and it was just that fire and passion was there. It just – the play wasn't. And I and it was it was good to see them, you know – dropping the gloves, jostling after the whistles. It shows that, you know, they really wanted to, to be there, but just their lack of, of playing that 60 minutes. I think the Ducks are lacking that grit play, that real hockey, physical, hard hitting, drop the gloves to energize your team mentality this season. And I know the league's getting watered down with that, which is unfortunate because that, I mean, that's the integrity of the game. That's real hockey. But I, I liked what I saw from the Ducks. You know, Richie was over there throwing his body around. Kessler, I mean, even Gibson got into it, you know, not letting people getting in front of him. I know Brett Richie, uh, you know, at first, I think the first period, he was right in front of Gibson and, like, borderline touching him. And at first, the Ducks didn't do anything. But after that, you know, 
go figure when I go play my beer league game and go, you know, listen to the game, second period, all hell breaks loose. I'm like, man, I wanted to pull over and just throw my sling TV on my phone, just watch the game, you know, middle of the street. But I mean, that's one good thing I can say about the Ducks. They brought that, that physicality back and they need to start playing like that more often. It's going to prevent teams from trying to take liberties at your goalie or, or try to take runs at, at other players too. Yeah, I agree. I think that first game against Dallas, the Ducks uh, really let the Stars run them over. Uh, they got way too much in Gibson's face. I think in the second game, even though the Ducks lost, I agree with you. I liked you know the the intensity that I saw from them. Richie was going at it. Um, you saw Gibson get into it too as well. And all kinds of different stuff was going on there. He had Ben. He was barking at uh, Shin from the bench. I don't know why. Maybe he was asking what he wanted to eat for dinner later that night. I have no idea. <laughs> but but Ben was being a punk uh, in that game. But, you know, they, they outplayed the Ducks. It is what it is in that game. And they were, you know, going at it. I did I did like the fact that the Ducks got mad, though, and actually fought back. I felt like in that first game against Dallas, they didn't do enough of that. So they did that in this game. Unfortunately, Nick Ritchie wasn't able to finish this game. You know, his contract dispute, all that got taken care of. He played in the game against Chicago. He plays in this game against Dallas. We posted the uh, the video where Ben checked him into the uh, boards late in the second period, and Ritchie never came back from that. He has an upper body injury, and, you know, we don't know if he's going to play in this game coming up here against San Jose, but uh, he's now out too, you know, adding to the laundry list of all kinds of injuries, which we'll, we'll get to that later in the show as well. But uh, one thing I did like, Eddie, was uh, Ryan Getzloff's response after the game. Uh, Eric Stevens wrote, you know, one of his articles in The Athletic, and the captain was pretty upset. You know, uh, Getzloff finally also coming back the last couple games. You know, he'd been out for a little bit. He gets two goals in this game, but uh, he really sounds off after this loss. And in the article, he says, you know, quote, we didn't play hockey. Uh, It's (laughs) embarrassing. Um, you know, I, I don't want to drop the F-bomb, but he drops the F-bomb and he's upset. He talks about everything going on with this team and what's going, you know, basically what's going wrong, really. And, I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm not happy that they lost, but, I mean, Eddie, if you look at Getzhoff as a captain, you have to be happy about uh, the fact that he's not happy with what's going on with the team and he's, and he's you know, pretty pissed off. Oh, I loved it. I mean, he led by example that Dallas game. He, he was he was that physical, that gritty. He scored goals. I mean, what more do you want from the captain? I'm glad he went publicly and called out the team. I mean, th- that's the right thing to do right now. I mean, I'm pretty sure he had numerous talks with them in the locker room behind closed doors, be, you know, without the cameras. But you know, for them to express himself that way, I mean, it's great. And hopefully, that lights you know a, lights a fire under the team. I mean, come on, you, you, your captain's calling you out now publicly. And and it is embarrassing that, the way you guys have been playing. I mean, I love the Ducks. You guys are awesome. I, I, I'll support you if you lose the rest of the season, no matter what. But, um, I mean, this play is embarrassing. I mean, if you guys were playing 60 minutes and, and it was just a hard-fought game and you just got outplayed, that's, that's different. But that hasn't been the case here. I mean, we're too talented. And it seems like the only players that are, are showing up each and every day willing to play I mean, you know, despite the, their little mistakes here and there, are, are our young guns, the rookies. I mean, I think every player, you know, being a professional athlete should come with that mentality to the rink, 110%. I haven't seen that. I mean, if these players are just content with just being mediocre and just collecting a paycheck, then, I mean, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be in the league. You shouldn't call yourself a professional athlete at all. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you 100% more. And, and, you know, some of the other quotes that Getzloff had in that article, you know, he said, quote, the way we play defense and the way we swing our sticks around and not help our goalie. Uh, I got asked the other day if I thought we hung him out to dry it, and I said, no, well, my answer's changed. And, I mean, that's obvious. Anybody out there knows watching this team that Gibson's been left to hung out to dry in every fucking game this year. Yeah, that's it. I dropped the F-bomb. Yep, just like Getzloff. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. The way that uh, he's he's been left out there, and I'm glad to see Getzoff, you know, go off on there. I mean, he, he's you know been talking about different things and saying what's going wrong. And here's here's part of the issue too. Eddie talks about right here. Quote: We're not moving the puck uh, effectively. We're not making passes. 
We play in our own zone the whole time. If you don't execute first, the second pass is out of the zone. You spend the whole time in your zone. We're chasing around with one hand on our stick and poking at pucks. That's exactly what's been going on with this team. They got away for it, uh, got away with it uh, in the first seven games. But you can't do that. I mean, it, especially in this Dallas game, this the second one. Uh, you know, I was really upset with uh, Shin on one of the plays there, where he just stood there and let the uh, Dallas forward slide in and score. And and what was disappointing in that game too, Eddie, was you know the Ducks actually slowed down Ben and, and Seguin pretty good in this game, but they let the the bottom six destroy them in this game. And that that third pairing we talked about, it's not working out for the Ducks. Uh, Peterson, Schuster, and Shin, those guys aren't working out, and. Uh, you know, it's going to be a problem going forward. Oh, yeah. I noticed uh, Shin, too, in the Vegas game, standing watching a player score again, as well as the Dallas one. He lets them walk right in, and boom, a goal gets scored. And then, you know, it's just you can't play hockey that way. If you want to be a fan, you want to watch the game, and get your ass off the ice and go in the front row of the glass seats. I mean, yeah, your little eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars contract can afford that. I mean, no, it's a game where everyone has to keep moving their feet, keep playing until the, that clock says zero and have that mentality. And, and you know, I, I don't know. Like, I love his physical play. Don't get me wrong. I love how he throws his body around. He's willing to, to get in people's faces. But, I mean, standing around watching the play, that's just terrible. That, that's You learn that from when you first start skating when you're three, four years old and start playing, you know, hockey. You, just, you keep moving around. You don't sit there and watch the play. I mean – don't be a, a, a spectator, be a player. Uh, just really frustrating. And like you said, you know, like like you said too, that that bottom pairing is not working out, and we need someone that stay at home defenseman type that moves that that puck moving, like Jeff Petrie kind of guy. He he's a more stay at home defenseman. He's been increasing his numbers over there in Montreal, but I mean that's the kind of player we need that's willing to move up and move around and not just watch the play and then produce you know, when possible. Yeah, absolutely. And, and another thing that it kind of add insult to injury is the Ducks did play uh, Max Comtois in the game against Chicago. Uh, he got hurt. He had a knee injury. He did not play in the game against Dallas. Uh, you know, he's played 10 games. He's had two goals and five assists. Uh, he did burn the first year of his uh, entry-level contract because he played in that 10th game. So you add that to the situation. So now you've got Richie comes back. He's out. Comtois out as well. Uh, all this injury stuff going on. Um, a little uh, – we, we did have a fan question about Patrick Eves. And I might as well just up, update you all now on Patrick Eves. He's still dealing with his uh, shoulder uh, issue. And, you know, he was supposed to be back by the 10th game. Now we're here past the 11th game. He's not back. So he did travel with the team on this road trip to Chicago and Dallas – so we're hoping he's going to be back soon. But it's very frustrating. If you're a Ducks fan right now, there's not a lot of positive things to talk about. It's just being a realist. I mean, uh, you know, they've lost these four games in a row. You've got some guys that are hurt. Uh, like you were talking about, Eddie, too, the, uh, the third pairing on defense isn't as good. They actually ended up sending uh, Schuster on waivers. I know a lot of people were calling for Shen to be sent on waivers. Uh, it looks like Randy Carlisle is trying to shake – you know, things up and send a message. You know, I, I don't know if that's going to work. I, you know, a lot of people are calling for his head. One of the fan questions we had, Eddie, is uh, when do the Ducks get rid of Randy Carlisle from Michelle? And we also had people saying, uh, when is Randy Carlisle going to get placed on waivers? I mean, a lot of people are upset. Uh, what do you think? You know, it's 11 games in. Uh, do you think uh, a lot, you know, some of the people are asking, uh, you know, George asked too, do you blame Randy Carlisle? Do you blame the team? Do you blame both? Uh, what do you think after 11 games? Uh, you know, what's your assessment, uh, you know, as opposed to the uh, the coaching by Carlisle and the team as a whole? Uh, I mean, I, I've expressed my displeasure for Carlisle since he got hired. And also uh, uh, Robert at GT350RK asked a similar question regarding when the Ducks need to make a coaching change. Um my analogy is you break up with a boyfriend or girlfriend or, or whatever, whoever you want to date for a reason. And then going back is going to be good short term, but all those issues that you broke up with that person for are going to just, you know, rise again. 
Same thing with hockey. I mean, we fired, he was fired for a reason. He was brought back. It was all, you know, cupcakes and rainbows, whatever. And then it's resorting back to why he got fired again. I mean, why would you want to kind of go backwards and go get a coach that, that wasn't meeting the standards of the team and then hire him again? I've never been a fan of, of hiring him back. I respect him immensely. And I thank him for everything he's done for the Ducks. He, he helped us get our cup. But, I mean, this game's changing, and it's changing fast. As fast as the game is, that's how fast, it, you know, the, the play style is changing. And and I, I was hoping he would be let go after last season. And, and I'm sorry to say this, and I don't wish anyone to be fired from their job, but I know he's well off, and he'll get some kind of position in, in the near future quickly. But I, I think he should be done. I think it's time for a change. We have, uh, you know we have to put the team first and no matter how the you know relationship is the good relationship he has with the ducks and everything he's done. I mean, it's business business comes first and, and no matter what the most important thing for the ducks and any organization is winning. And that's, that's one of the most important things at this level. Yeah. I'm with you too. I put a lot of it on Carlisle. Uh, I mean, you know, we talked about on the podcast a little while ago, before the season started, I had a chance to talk to Kevin Bieksa, and he he was not happy with the way that Carlisle was doing things, and obviously he wasn't brought back this year, and he did not think Carlisle was going to survive more than a few months. So if you would have talked about in the first week, you might have said, oh, okay, well, whatever, the Ducks uh, you know, won five out of their first seven games, but now they're back in 500. Again, like I said, it's not the end of the world. It's early. The Ducks usually do poorly in October and November, they turn it around in December uh, most of the time, at least in the recent season. So, you know, not all is lost, but you have to be concerned here with what's going on. I think one of the things maybe, Eddie, you can talk about is this team has had a lot of injuries. A lot of uh, young players are on this team. Now, the thing with, at least on the offense, to me, a majority of the problem with this team is the lack of a forecheck, the lack of the puck possession. We'll talk about some of those stats and whatnot, too, on the show. But you have all these rookies playing. You have different lines, different players. Uh, what do you think as far as a lack of chemistry on this team with the forward units? Do you think that that is concern? I mean, chemistry is something that doesn't always happen overnight. You know, we had the career retirement game. They talked about uh, Stu, uh, excuse me, Steve Ruchin and uh, Paul Correa and Tamu all together on one line and how well they played all that time. But with this team, you look at what's going on with these guys and you're, you're, you've got a lot of young players in there. You're moving people around. Uh, I think part of the problem, too, is a lack of chemistry for the Ducks uh, on offense. Oh, yeah, I agree, too. I mean, I, I, I hate being moved lines away from a person I like to play with. I, I have set lines and set things I like to do. And when things get deviated from that, I hate it. Uh, I mean, it's, in, in ice, it happens a lot more. I, I play a lot more roller now. It's, it's convenient for me. But in ice, you know, you, you get moved around a lot. I, I used to hate that. I used to always like playing with my line mate because I knew him the best. I, he knew me the best. And, and same with the Ducks and, and, and the pros. They have people that they hang out with, that they have that chemistry with on and off the ice that, you know, it, it's kind of it sucks when you're playing with someone, you, you're hanging out with them, and then boom, they're moved to line three and you have, you know, a brand new guy on your first line. Now you have to kind of adjust to him and, and play to his style and, and play to that. It just, you know, it, it gets annoying. And that's uh, that's part of uh, Carlisle's fault as well because he loves shuffling lines. I mean, it's, he's just – you know, like they'll spaghetti hit the wall. I guess you use that. Just whatever line's going to work right there. I mean, it, it's not all Carlisle's fault. And I know people always say that too. Like I, I've read a lot of comments on people saying how it, it's not the coach's fault. The players take, take responsibility. At this level, it's it, at this time, it's everyone's fault. Everyone on that ice, even the guys in the press box that are just practicing more than they're playing. I mean, everyone's to blame right now when the Ducks are, are at this level. The assistant coaches, the people in the background, too, for not saying anything different. Like, hey, we should change up the process. But uh, as far as shakeups, too, I think you mentioned that earlier. Um, I mean, I think the, the coach should be the first to go, and that sends a message down to the whole team, especially if they're not responding to him. Um, especially if, if they're he's changing lines that have that good chemistry and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, 
chemistry is everything in hockey. And like I told you, I think the first or second show about Eric Carlson going to the Sharks, I said it's going to be a chemistry thing and see if it works out. Uh, I haven't really paid too much attention to the Sharks, but the last few games I watched, I haven't really seen Eric Carlson really be that much of a factor or, or fit well with that organization yet. He's still adjusting. I mean, it goes to show it's that chemistry part of it. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at. It, and looking at the forwards, it, it doesn't seem like there's much of cohesiveness, uh, you know, going on in that team. And so everybody's looking at Gibson uh, trying to hold the fort down. They're looking at the defense to try and hold the fort down. And yeah, I mean, you can look at that bottom third pairing, like we talked about with Peterson, Shin, and, and Schuster. They've been less than stellar. Obviously, you know, that's duh. We can see that. But, yeah. The four check hasn't been there. So some of the things that we're going to, I'm going to mention some of the stat stuff. I know we haven't talked about stats as much on this show as we have the last couple times, but we got to look at some math here. If you hate math, then, uh, you know, uh, turn off the show, but <laughs> we're going to look over some numbers here because this really tells the tale of this team throughout the season. Uh, one of the stats we'll look at is the shots for and the shots against. So, uh, through these 11 games, the Ducks have averaged 24 shots on goal. That is a league worst. And against, they've given up 38.2, also a league worst. So, I mean, this is reality here. You know, I'm a homer. I love my Ducks, but I got to tell you what's going on with this team, and, and it's terrible. So, you look at the shots for and the shots against, not, not so hot, obviously, the worst in both categories. Well, then you look at some puck possession stuff, and there's a whole bunch of stats out there. I'll go over just one of the main ones, the Corsi stat. If you're unfamiliar with that stat, it talks about the shots on goal. It also talks about the missed shots, the block shots, and then it takes those all together, what your, what your team has, you know, basically the attempts is what you will of shots on goal against what they've been given up. So obviously, if it's a 38.2 against and 24 Four, it's going to be a bad number. Yes, it is. The Ducks are at 40.77% on the Corsi 4, which is, again, the league worst. So you're looking at this team through the 11 games. The other team has the puck, you know, based upon those stats, you know, almost 60%, almost, you know, you know, close to two-thirds of the time. How can you expect to win all these games and rely on Gibson and the defense to try and to win you these battles? And the Ducks have done okay. I mean, they're 5-5-1. Five, five and one. It's not like, you know, they've lost 10 of the 11 games. They're actually a 500 team. So it's miraculous, I guess, if you want to look at the silver lining of these stats. And they're giving up a lot of shots. They're not generating as many shots. But they're still hanging in there. They're still 500. Obviously, it's, it's not where we want to be. But some things have got to change, and I think a lot of it is what Eddie touched on. It's about the chemistry, uh, and I really think it's the forward lines. You're looking at different things um, going on here, and it's not working out. Obviously, Eves has been out for a while. Uh, we saw Silverberg go out, and he was doing amazing. You know, he had three goals early on in the season. That hurt the team as well. They get back Getzloff. They get back Kessler. You know, all these things that are going on, it's tough, and I think if the Ducks can – get some kind of chemistry and some kind of consistency down and sustain a decent forecheck, then they can turn some of these stats around. Part of the problems too, Eddie, is they're passing. You watch some of these games, they're maybe able to do one pass, but then after that, the second pass is either a turnover or they end up doing the, the, the dump thing. Like uh, Carla likes the dump and chase thing and that doesn't work as well. So to me, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. Obviously, it's the shots, but it, it's the passes too and the ability to get that puck in the other team's zone when the Ducks have it, and they're just not doing it effectively. Oh, I 100%, 100% agree. Like, great stats. And that answers uh, on Twitter at Miss Low Nicole's question about how come the Ducks aren't starting as strong. I mean, th- those stats say it all. I mean, yeah, our record shouldn't be the record it is right now, and I'm glad that we have the record we do. And it, like you said, it's not full panic mode yet. I, I I still think, and I know the Ducks are going to make the playoffs, but we need something significantly to change. We need to start taking all the stats and all the games that we didn't play well, no matter the games we've won, we won, even the games we didn't play well, we have to learn from that mistake and build from it. I mean, if you're not going to learn from your mistake and you, you're just not going to move forward and you're not going to have success, 
I mean, we have a uh, San Jose, Philadelphia, and the Rangers coming up the next three games, and those are going to be kind of tough. I mean, yeah, I know New York is going through their stuff too, but I mean, they still have, you know, that firepower, and they're they're a little more of a speedy team too. So, I mean, it, it all goes with just adapting and changing. Yeah, and I mean, another thing to look at too is the way the schedule has gone. So, if you look at these uh, first couple weeks here, the Ducks have only been at home for four games and they've been on the road for, you know, seven games. So, I mean, you know, does that factor into it? Sure. That may play into it too. You look at the month of November, as you talked about, they got San Jose, Philadelphia and New York at home. And then after that, I mean, most of the month of November, the ducks are at home. I mean, they've got Columbus at home. They've got the Kings away. Then they've got uh, Calgary, Minnesota, Nashville, and they're awesome banners, by the way. Uh, they have Vegas on the road, and then they come home again, Toronto, Colorado, uh, Vancouver, the Oilers. So they have this stretch here where they have a lot of games at, you know, at home coming up here before they then you know go on a road trip at, at the end of the month. So, I mean, that may factor into it too. So, I mean, not, not all is lost. I mean, yeah, you look at the puck possession stats, the shots on goal – um, you know, they're not doing as well as, you know, we had hoped. You know, another issue, too, has been uh, the face-off circle, Eddie. The Ducks are uh, 47.3% in winning face-offs. So they're, they're losing more face-offs than they're winning. Uh, that's 27th in the league. So not last, but close to last. So that's another issue that, uh, you know, the Ducks have had uh, trying to win those battles. And if you're not winning the puck right off the face-offs and you're not controlling the play – that's going to affect your uh, puck possession numbers as well. Another issue that you have to look at too, especially in these last four games, is the special teams play. If you look at the Ducks on the power play in these last four games, they had 11 opportunities. They did not score one time on the power play. They were 0 for 11. You look at the opponents, the opponents had 16 power plays. I'm not even going to go into the whole they got more penalties than us kind of debacle. We all know about that. But anyways... The other team had 16 power plays, and the Ducks gave up four power play goals. So the other team is, you know, operating at 25% in these last four games. The Ducks are operating at zero. So, I mean, there's just not a lot going right for the Ducks. The Ducks also got outscored in these last four games, 15 to 6. So a lot is going on with this team, and that's what what people are asking is, you know, why are they losing? Uh, what, What is happening with this team? Uh, that's what Melissa asked. She asked, you know, why are we not playing like we should? And I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I, I really think a lot of it focuses more on the offense. Yes, you can sit there and look at the defense. I think Fowler, Lindholm, Manson, and Montour are not playing as well as they are. And even Fowler talked about that in his recent comments uh, after this last game against Dallas. And I, and I think the top four you know, defensive pairings have not been as good. But if you're not – you know, getting the puck down the other team's zone, you're not controlling the play, you're having to dump the, the puck in too much like, uh, you know, old school Randy Carlisle method. You're putting a lot of pressure on your defense and a lot of pressure on your goalie. And I, I just don't think it's a fair situation. You can sit there and, and point the finger, uh, probably at Schuster and Shen, obviously. They, they've they been making some mistakes. But for the Ducks top four and Gibson, I, I think a lot has been put on them unnecessarily Eddie in these first 11 games. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more with you on that. I, I, you mentioned Gibson too. I, I still feel bad for him. And I, I was one of the people that wasn't a Gibson fan for a few seasons. So I'm glad I, I can admit that I'm wrong about him. And I think he's a outstanding goalie now. And I got to, uh, to meet him a few times and his attitude changed and he was just, you know, more friendlier professional with fans and things like that. I, I just feel bad for him. And, and, you know, you can't put it all on the defense. Yeah, they have a responsibility to, you know, pretty much protect their goalie and create chances. But, I mean, when you don't have possession of the puck and, and I mean, all the stats that you're reading off too, I mean, on paper, I mean, that it makes sense why the Ducks are on that this losing streak now. I mean, you know, I, I, I like the Ducks are willing to admit their mistakes and call themselves out. But, I mean, talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. Like stop saying stuff and go out there and do it and go out there and practice that that extra harder and don't take a day off even if you're given one because I really don't think you deserve a day off at all especially even playing. 
mean, that's just my personal opinion, though. Yeah, and I think you know part of it too that they they talked about in the defense is. You know, like we said, I wouldn't put it all on defense. But if you're looking at how they're playing and whatnot, when the other team has the puck, if you notice with the Ducks, there's a lot of standing around on defense. They're 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 they've got one hand on the stick. They're waving at the pucks. They're not uh, blocking people out of the way. Um, you know, th- that's the big issue I see on the defense is is they're out there, but they're just that's it. They're out there. They're not going at other players. They're not pushing people and boxing them out, giving Gibson or Miller, you know, a clean uh, a view of the puck. They're trying to wave at too many passes and, and whatnot. And that's just not going to get it done. Uh, that's, that's, that's a big thing I see on the defense is that, you know, I hate to say it, but they're half assing it on defense and it's not everybody. It's, it's not everybody, but I mean, Fowler talked about it too. Like I said, and, you know they're they're just not they're not uh, engaging enough, and um, I think part of it too is they're not getting the puck out of the zone. Uh, that's that's the problem. You know they're they're not going at people hard enough. But then when they are getting the puck, they're not getting that outlet pass. They're not getting back the other way. They're not getting that transition game going, and that's another part for this team that's been tough. So the Ducks do have a lot to work on. I, I mean I'm not. I, I'm not saying it's the end of the world. I'm not trying to be all gloom and doom. Uh, they are five five and one. They're still five hundred. Uh, I'm still honestly, I'm still happy with with the Ducks. Right? Yeah, they lost four games in a row. Should I be a little concerned? Should you be a little concerned? Absolutely, of course. But given all the stuff that's gone on, the way things have gone against this team, uh, you you still have to look a little bit at the positive. They're five five and one. They've played seven of the 11 games on the road. They've had all kinds of injuries. They've got all these rookies in here that, you know, haven't played. The chemistry is is all screwed up. And I, I still think, Eddie, that they're going through growing pains. I, um, I do look at the month of November. They have a lot more home games. I do think that they can start turning things around then. I think if they can get Silverberg back, that's going to help a lot too. If they get Eves back, which, like we said, he's still dealing with his – you know, his shoulder injuries, they're still dealing with that. Hopefully Comtois not out for a while. He was one of the, you know, the Ducks' uh, best players so far early in the season. You know, he had seven points in ten games. I mean, you can, you know, it's been remarkable for him. I think I still look at this team and I still have hope. You know, obviously we're pointing out the stats and pointing out the things that are going wrong with this team uh, just to kind of show why they've lost four in a row. But I still have faith in this team. And, you know, one of the things, uh, one of our writers, Adam uh, Tenenbaum, said, uh, Eddie, you're probably laughing. He said, hashtag, um, at least we're not the Kings. So, you know, if you want to look at something, I mean, we aren't as bad as L.A., thankfully. But, yeah, there's a lot of issues with this team. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, We aren't really surprised by that, though. We knew that players were going to be out going into the season. We knew a bunch of rookies were going to come in and have to play and and figure this out. I think Gibson has played outstanding, uh, you know, through this, all this mess and kept this team together. So there's a lot going on with this team. A lot, uh, you know, and unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it's, it has been negative. Some of the stuff we've been talking about going over the stats and what's happening as far as the way this team's going. But I think if they can get some of these players back and they can get, the, the forward lines, at least in some kind of cohesive manner, I think that's the key. Really, to me, that's how this team is going to turn around is doing all these shuffles with the forward lines isn't going to work. You've got to get the guys together who you think are going to work well. And I, I really think that's a big key. I mean, obviously, the defense hasn't been perfect. But, I mean, when the other teams had the puck, you know, 60% of the time in your zone – I don't care who you have on your blue line. You're not going to be able to uh, stop the other team all the time, Eddie. Oh, no, not at all. That, that's just, I mean, that, that's you can see it eat game in, game out. And I think you're right. We have to get the our lines back together. We're going to have a lot of people injured. Uh, once they come back, it, it, it's going to have a positive influence on the Ducks. Um, when Nick Ritchie came back, and I know a lot of us, including myself, were like, maybe he shouldn't come back. You know, the team's doing well without him. But, I mean, when he came back, he made his presence known, that front net presence, his body, you know, throwing around. And, and that really 
it seemed to spark the Ducks and play that mentality as well, especially come the game against Dallas because you know after that goal, Getzloff scored. Richie right, right away. Uh, I think it was Richie the one that pushed one of the Dallas players out of the way and started that whole scramble or scramble in front of the net. I mean, I, that's the kind of things we need. You know, other teams need to know that we're not going to let you just skate around and come in. And you mentioned defensive four, and I wanted to touch on. I mean, defense needs to body up more, throw their body around, let other players know they can't just just come in the puck, come in our zone, skating like nothing, is because we're just going to sit there and watch them and you know go around us. No, Manson. You're a big boy. You know how to hit. Lindholm, big boy. You guys all know how to hit and put the body on people. I'm not saying go and take their heads off. I'm just saying put body on them. Let them know that if they come close to the net, they're going to get hit. If they're against that boards and they have the puck, you're going to take a run at them and they're going to get hit. It makes them react faster with the puck and not just kind of like, hey, well, you know, no one's really touching us. We're just going to just, you know, set up a good play and then boom, score on an impossible chance for Gibson to save. I think that factors in too as well. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that's, uh, you know, we had Thomas. uh, He's been writing the articles uh, after every 10 games uh, this season like he has in the past. He he goes over and he looks at everything. And, you know, one of the disappointments he talked about in his article, if you didn't read it, was Josh Manson and not laying the body on people as much. And it's true. I mean, if you look at the Ducks' top four, you have Montour, Fowler, Lindholm, and Manson. Manson is the big boy of those four and you know how much I love Josh Manson but he hasn't been playing as big as he usually is uh Lindholm hasn't either so the Ducks got some stuff that they've got to figure out they got to work out some kinks uh all around I mean it's going to be tough I I still think that this team is a playoff team I think they're going through some growing pains now obviously like we talked about young players in there and players out so We'll see what happens in the month of November. Like we said, they've got a stretch here. Four weeks coming up. Most of the games are at home, so I would look for them to turn it around. So it's not all gloom and doom, but, yeah, there are some issues. Obviously, as a lot of you asked us some questions. I've seen people blowing up stuff on Twitter. And, yeah, if you're talking about Randy Carlisle, is he on a hot seat? Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. So, um, you know, we'll look at – uh, what happens in the coming weeks but uh eddie i know there's some league news too you want to cover as well you know before we wrap up the show so you know what's going on in the nhl that you want to talk about yeah uh, legendary elite beer league goalie scott foster has been invited back to the uh, the blackhawks organization to just to fill in for some optional practices over there so it's good to see the him you know him being a sensation you know coming in last season it's good to see him being able to practice with the team and, and things like that when they need that extra goalie and for those optional skates. Also, I want to express my condolences to former Islanders GM Charles Wang, who passed away. Uh, from what I read, he, he did a lot for the organization, so that was a, that's a, a loss for words right there. Um, a lot of you guys might know I, I watch and follow the Avalanche too a lot. They're, they're one of my, my top favorite teams as well, especially growing up being a Patrick Wall fan. So uh, just to mention their uh, records, uh, Miko Ranson and Nathan McKinnon broke a set of franchise record for the duel that had a, a nine point streak, a consecutive uh, point streak. So that's pretty good to see. And then Nathan McKinnon broke the eight goal streak uh, for the franchise for most uh, goals to start a season. So that, that's pretty good for them over there. Um, the Jets and Ehlers, I want to have, I think I pronounced his name right. He finally scored his uh his goal after a 26 game drought, and he's he's one of their top players, and he should be scoring it more. The, the funny thing about that is uh, when he scored, he simulated pulling the monkey off his back and just do it. So that was pretty funny to see. Uh, if you guys didn't hear, New York Rangers waived Matt Bolesky. We talked about that on our last show. He cleared waivers, so I'm pretty sure he's going to go down. And then the league upheld Wilson suspension, and they're not going to reduce the games. So, um, yeah, I guess he should have. Uh, I guess he should have hit his spouse to get less games or something like that. I'm so joking. I don't condone that violence at all toward women. I'm just frustrated still about the Nashville incident, things like that, and then Wilson. But that, that's the league news that kind of wraps it up. Yeah, and uh, you know, like we said, we talked about Seattle coming into the league. Uh, that's going to be coming up, and whether or not you know, stay tuned to see what happens. Uh, you know, with the uh, the divisions and how that gets changed as well. So uh, we're getting close to the end here. You know, there was one uh, thing that did happen this last week to Eddie. I guess we can play this clip. But uh, if you don't listen to uh, a post game show 
after the Duck Games, you want to listen to Josh Brewster. He does the Ducks Call Show, and he had Jay on, uh, Jr. Uh, on there recently, and uh, I, I, you know, they answered my question, Eddie, and uh, basically, we'll play the clip here, and you can listen to uh, uh, what they said about the Ducks. 830-837-142-830-830. You're listening to Duck Calls presented by New Method Wellness with my very special guest, Jeremy Roenick. Let's go to Mike from Anaheim. Hello, Mike. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. How you doing? Good. Uh, I just had a quick question for JR. It seemed like, uh, you know, back in the day when you played against Anaheim, you always got up for, you know, uh, playing the Ducks. Just like Dallas uh, got up for playing, uh, you know, the Ducks tonight too. Is there any uh, teams out there that, when you played, you really felt like you had a little bit of uh, extra, you know, maybe momentum or, uh, you know, anything when you played against certain teams? That's a good question. Yeah, 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 Mike, hundred percent. And I think it depends on where you play because once you get, once you go to a team, um, you ingrain yourself in kind of the history of that team, right? So. Um, I think when I get to, when I got to Arizona in '96, um, Anaheim was a was a new team, and we needed somebody to really gravitate to to become a rival and build a rival for. So um, when I was in Arizona with the Phoenix Coyotes, what it was called at the time, um, we played we played the Ducks quite often, uh, and then in the playoffs a couple times. So that hatred became very, very dominant in, in my life. So even when I went to San Jose, um, I've had that hatred and I've had that, uh, that respect, but that competitive level. I mean, in my last year of my career, uh, and I'll tell you, the, the, the last, it's, it'll stick with me for the rest of my life. We're the number one team in the National Hockey League in the San Jose Sharks. And uh, we lose in the first round to Anaheim on an unbelievable display by some of their top, top, top players and you know I got ousted by the Anaheim Ducks the last team I ever played against so it's you, you just you find your teams that have their rivals in Chicago it was St. Louis it was Detroit um, in Philadelphia it was the Devils it was the Rangers and you you just you find your way to get ingrained in those uh, in, that, in, that, in that history lesson that makes you even more excited to play those games Hey, uh, Mike, you got anything else for me tonight uh, before I let you go? That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. The other question, I guess, uh, more for you, Josh. What do you think about uh, Randy Carlyle? You know, after this loss, it okay. seems like some people are a little bit more upset. So what do you think about his coaching well, style so far in the well, five games? Okay, well, Mike, thank you for calling the show. Mike, uh, good stuff tonight. Mike, let me tell you what. Uh, I like the fact that Randy is uh, changing, you know, at his uh, – I don't want to say advanced age. He's not, he's not that old a guy. He's been doing this a long time. And I've been clear that, you know, uh, w- what happened against San Jose, uh, JR's old club, uh, last a few months ago was a big wake-up call. You ask any duck, they'll tell you. And I think it was a wake-up call for the organization. And uh, it was it was time. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was time to change. And I have to give credit to, to Randy um, for not being so set in his ways that he can't, uh, you know, be open-minded to uh, play playing a different way, playing, as they say, a quicker game. That's the buzzword in the NHL now, Jr. But, look, you, you played for Ken Hitchcock. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I, JR, you I'm, played I'm for gonna, Ken Hitchcock. I'm going to sneak in here. I'm Go ahead. No, please, little, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. My own little view of Randy. Please. Yeah, please. Um, Randy, Randy did an amazing job in Anaheim in his first stint, and, but he was known as a hard ass. He was known as someone who was going to get in your face. He was gonna known as a tough, tough coach to play for. Um, he gets dismissed from Anaheim, goes to Toronto, kind of has that same kind of mentality, and I think had trouble finding that happy medium to where he can be the hands-on coach that's, that's stern, that's strong, that has a very, um, a very strong voice, and being a guy who's understanding and lets the players do what they want. I think coming back to Anaheim, He's done an amazing job of make, making sure that he has that uh, that happy medium, and I think he's uh, he's a tremendous coach and a guy that uh, knows how to get it done. I played against him as a player, and played against him as a, you know as a coach. And I'll tell you what, his players like to play for him, and it, it makes it really hard for a player to play against players that like to play for their coach. So I think he's done a great job in, in his whole maturation of being a coach. 
So that was, uh, you know, basically uh, JR talking about rivalries and whatnot. And I think that's kind of something, Eddie, that, you know, the Ducks are going to have to look to uh, coming up the rest of the season. I mean, they're going to have to look at some of these games. You know, they're going to be playing the Sharks coming up here. There should be some extra motivation against them since they're, you know, a division opponent. And, you know, they're going to be playing the Kings. They're going to be playing Calgary, uh, Vegas again. Edmonton, Vancouver, some more teams in the division, even Nashville at the end of the month of November. So those rivalries that JR talks about is maybe something the Ducks can look for uh, as far as motivation and getting this team going uh, this next month. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm extremely jealous of you getting to talk to JR. He's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out his book, I mean, I'd suggest you check that out. I read it twice. Uh, he's one of the most outspoken and honest players in the game. So it's good to, you know, it's, it's good that you got to talk to him and things like that. He, and he got to, you know, mention his hatred for the Ducks coming in. That's always cool. I mean, knowing that he hates the Ducks. But no, I mean, I mean, he's a, a good fan. I, he mentioned, too, in his interview that, you know, he's a big fan of uh, Raquel and Coste as well. So, I mean, we have some big games coming up. I know San Jose is going to want their, uh, their win back against us. And I know we definitely want to keep – the train rolling on beating San Jose, especially after that sweep. You know, I mean, we have to make up for that. So it's going to be a fun few weeks, and you know, hopefully November we'll have more to be thankful for than than our our, uh, our losing streak right now. I'm I don't know if we're just I know October 31st is coming and it's Halloween and we want to dress up as losers, so we just want to lose intentionally to be the Kings. But <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, if you guys want to do that, go ahead. You guys can dress up as losers for the for you know and be the Kings for Halloween. But then come no- November, let's be thankful for all the wins we're going to get and all the I guess the extra pounds we're going to eat from whatever we eat come Thanksgiving. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, we gave away tickets to the uh, Korea game. Uh, this last week, we're giving away tickets to the Scott Nieder retirement game. Obviously, that's coming up in February to our uh, Patreon uh, members. So, uh, www. Slash, or excuse me, www.patreon.com slash Ducks and Pucks. You can go on there. We're also going to give away a Scott Niedermeyer used stick uh, by him, obviously. So, look for that. We're doing all kinds of other giveaways as well. So check out those. Uh, thank you, know, thank you to everybody that's uh, signed on there as well, and we'll have some other goodies for you throughout the season. So with that, we'll be back in a week, and let's go Ducks.